problem with that. It says, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Like that, don't you? Yes. Amen. Serving the Lord is the best way. Amen. And we'll find out that there's a lot of joy that comes when you know uh, that what you did last night is acceptable and pleasing in the eyes of God. Amen. And you can go to bed every night with a clear conscience, knowing uh, that you have done that which is good in God's eyes. Amen. Well, let's go to Proverbs chapter 13. We read two verses there. So uh, powerful. Uh, Proverbs is a great book if you like to hear wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Uh, go to the book of Proverbs. The man that wrote it made a few mistakes, but who doesn't? I said the man that wrote it made a few mistakes, but who doesn't? Amen. Amen. Uh, am I the only one in here that's ever made a mistake? Oh. If you've ever made a mistake, say amen. 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 Praise God. We've all made mistakes. Amen. And the writer of this book was no different. But one great thing about him, as he wanted wisdom and knowledge, and he wanted to know how to understand how to rule God's people and God said because you didn't ask for riches because you didn't ask for fame because you didn't ask for uh, the enemies your enemies he said I'm going to give you all of it and I'm going to give you more you're going to be the wisest man that ever lived well if you're sitting here today that wasn't you amen you're not the wisest person that ever lived if I'm standing here today, I'm not the wisest person that ever lived. But I do know enough to know that if I serve the Lord, things are going to go better for me. Or I learned that by experience. Amen. And if you're on the other side of the fence, and you aren't living for the Lord, I jump the fence. Amen. And because the devil's on the fence. Don't ever ride the fence because that belongs to the devil. But if you're thinking about serving God, jump over the fence and get on God's side because it's the best place to be. And it'll give you more peace and more happiness than you can ever imagine. Amen. Proverbs 13, verses 14 and 15. Uh, the law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. The way of the transgressor is hard. I mean, I could uh, go into stories uh, because I've been serving the Lord for uh, a long time, about 50 years. I would say it's 50 years that I've been serving the Lord and preaching for some 40 some years. Amen. But uh, I have met a lot of people. I have seen a lot of things. I have seen a lot of people come in to the church and, and try to do their best for God. But somewhere along the line, the devil tricked them. Amen. And they ended up becoming a transgressor. Don't ever give up on what God has given you. Don't ever give up on this word God. Don't ever give up on the things that you hear preached. At this church, amen, because these are the things that will help keep you in this wicked and careless life. Now, there's a lot of evil going on out there. Yes. Oh, yes. A lot of horrible things. Yes. A young lady in our youth group in Indiana uh, was very young, got involved with someone that's old enough to be her grandfather, and she ended up having three sons with him. But as he got older and she got a little bit more mature, she realized that it wasn't love at all. It was security that drew her to him. And she had three children. She decided that uh, she did not really love him. She loved her kids, but she didn't love him. And so she applied for a divorce. Amen. But before all that happened, uh, she was happy. Sister Conklin and I picked her up in the teen van. We uh, drove her to church. She lived many miles away, probably 20 miles away from the church. We'd go get her on a Sunday night, Sunday morning. We'd pick her up, bring her back to the house of God, 
And then after church was over, we'd take her back home and then come back. And then we'd go back and pick her up for Sunday evening service. And then we loved this girl with all of our heart. Hallelujah. But in the process of time, her parents kept moving further and further away. And finally, uh, they dumped her off at what she called Grandpa's house. And that's when all the problems started. And next thing you know, she's applying for divorce. He said he wasn't going to put up with it. He grabbed a shotgun, a bunch of shells. He blew her away in front of the kids. He went into the lawyer's office, blew him away in front of the secretary. <coughs> and then he shot himself under the head and blew himself away. What a selfish and self-centered man that must have been to kill the mother of your children. Amen. He should have went on with his life. Yes, I made a mistake. I should have married somebody that young. But I have three wonderful sons, and I'm going to do my best to support them until I pass away. But rather than that, amen, he decided to make his sins worse and do worse than he did before. And he grabbed a shotgun and he did that. You see, the way of a transgressor is hard. If she would have stayed in the church, she would no doubt have married somebody in the church. Some young man that may not have treated her perfect, but at least they would have had a chance. At least he would have not fallen into that trap that he did, but she lost her way with God and ended up dying for her transgression. The way of a transgressor is hard. When someone walks out on God, uh, they are asking for a hard life. Yes. Amen. Amen. But I'll tell you what, I don't want to dwell on that all day. Praise God. I want to talk about the joy of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. Praise God. Somehow, some way, uh, she got painted into a corner. Somehow, some way, uh, uh, she felt like she was abandoned. And somehow, some way, she felt like she was going to be taken in by someone uh, that had some means. And someone would take care of her. And lo and behold, it turned out to become her demise. Praise God. Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Amen. People were crying and weeping because... The house of the Lord and the law was being read and just getting back into Israel and things weren't going real well. But the people were weeping after they heard the word of God and they realized how much they had transgressed and how hard their life was. And in verse number 10, then he said, talking about Nehemiah, then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet and sent portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. I like that. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. If you don't know about the joy of the Lord, uh, then you need to... Uh, Learn about the joy of the Lord because uh, the joy of the Lord is a, a wonderful, wonderful thing uh, to have. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you want real, lasting, and consistent joy, it will only come from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. A true and very close relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And we look at Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So uh, we want to have the same mind as Jesus. If we have the same mind as Jesus, we won't be sad. We won't be unhappy. We won't be fretting. We won't be worried. In fact, Jesus said, uh, fret not yourself because of evildoers. And he said, take no thought of tomorrow. 
because uh, there's enough evil in the day. Don't worry about tomorrow. Just think about today and think about how blessed you are and how good it is that God is to you. Start thinking like Jesus Christ. Everybody said amen. 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 Praise God. Did you notice that first word there? Let. Let. You have to let yourself think like Christ. Amen. We don't want to think like a transgressor. We want to think like Christ. When you go about your day, let yourself think like Jesus. When you go to work, let yourself think like Jesus. When you eat your lunch, let yourself think like Jesus. When you are on break, let yourself think like Jesus. When you're back at home with your kids and spouse and friends and neighbors, uh, think like Jesus. You have to let yourself think that way. Because it's not normal for people to think like Jesus. Oh my, Jesus is normal. He is the normal. And none of us are what I would call normal. I like to think of myself as being normal. And you probably do too. But that's really not true. We are all fall short of normal. The normal is Jesus Christ. He's the perfect one. He's the one that never cussed, never swore, never lied, never cheated, never committed fornication, never did anything wrong. Amen. He was perfect and spotless and no sin or guile was ever found in his mouth, and neither could they prove any of the things that they charged him of. He said it himself. He said, look at the law. He said, you can't find any fault in me concerning the law. Amen. Praise God. We need to get it in our mind. We need to start thinking like Jesus. Amen. It's a new way of thinking. It's a way that we need to learn. Amen. And when you learn it, you will find that you have joy. Sometimes when I'm at home, maybe uh, we can go to the negative side. How many of you ever been in a conversation where you feel like you keep going to the negative side? <laughs> negative this. Negative that. And then one of you says, hey, look, let's stop doing this. Let's go positive, positive, positive. Amen. There may be problems here, but God's going to fix them. We may have problems with our kids, but God's going to fix them. Amen. We have, may have problems with other things, but God's going to fix them. Amen. God is going to fix your problems. If you will trust in Him and think like Him, then you will have the mind of Christ and you will start making right decisions. Hallelujah. The way of a transgressor can be hard. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, come unto me in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Why would God say, come to me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden? Because God knows that you're worried about everything under the sun. You're worried about the wrinkles on your face. You're worried about getting old. You're worried about losing weight. You're worried about your health. You're worried about uh, your car. You're worried about whatever you've got in your house. And the other day I was worried about my uh, generator. I tried to start it, and I thought it wasn't going to start. And sure enough, when I pulled on it, it took right off. Praise God. Probably had something to do with the carburetor. I just had it installed on there. And why it took off so fast. Amen. Praise God. He said, Come unto me, all ye that are laid, labor and are heavy laden. You know, we we carry a lot of weight we don't need to carry. Right. Yes. We worry about relationships. We worry about people. Hey, when God wants you to have a companion, if you serve him, he will send you a good companion. Praise God. My mom said, I don't want one. <laughs> I had enough trouble with your dad. I don't want any. <laughs> Praise God. Well, he did have some mental problems, I have to admit. He did have some problems, which uh, kind of snuck up on him in life. Uh, but, uh, you know, Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. 
In other words, you're carrying a heavy load. You, you've got a yoke around your neck like an oxen, and you've got a big wagon behind you, and you've got all kinds of junk in the back of that wagon, and you're carrying it. You just, that's, that's all the past. Forget the past. I mean, you don't need to carry that. And get rid of that. That yoke. Uh, take my yoke upon you. Uh, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. What he's saying is, if you can do like I do, if you can think like I think, if you can understand the end from the beginning, if you realize that you're going to be in heaven someday, you will not be worried about the small and significant things that you face each and every day. They are minuscule. They're very small compared to the glory that is going to be revealed at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, two of his best 
friends got killed in the car wreck within one week or two. I mean, it wasn't very long. And then later, another one of his friends got killed. And three friends now are gone. Uh, a, a first marriage is gone. Can't see the kids. I mean, uh, God is trying to work on people. Amen. And the devil and other people come along and tell you, oh, don't, uh, don't do religion. It's hard on you. Amen. No, the way of the transgressor is hard. We have some men in here in West Virginia and the United States and all over the world. They don't even know who their father is. Can you say amen? Amen. They have no idea. The mother has no idea who their father is. Praise God. Now that is sad. But I'll tell you what. It doesn't work. The way of a transgressor is hard. And uh, you know, six or seven years down the road now. Uh, misery. Misery. The offsprings. Not allowed to see them. Uh, the offsprings. Uh, not allowed to, to contact them. They're out of state. You can't. Uh, even as, a, as the father can't go see them. And here, uh, you have this kind of problem. Amen. And the devil tries to make all this stuff look really good. Amen. Go out, party, have a big time. Uh, but then uh, the joy vanishes quickly. Amen. You see how the devil works? You bite the bait. He reels you in. He cuts your fins off. He cuts your tails off. He cuts your head off. He guts you. And then he fries your soul in hell. That's exactly what the devil wants to do to every a sinner, every child of God. Don't let that happen. Don't give in to the devil. Recognize that Jesus Christ is the answer for the world today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I love uh, the Lord. Yes. I appreciate him so very much. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 through 8 says, Who, being in the form of God, talking about the Son of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Praise God. I want to paraphrase this just a little bit. He came to earth, became a servant, and then he died a horrible death. Amen. Number one, God was actually on the inside of that human body, and he was okay with that. He didn't go around making a big deal out of it. He became a servant to all humanity. He humbled himself. He was not forced to do this. He did it on his own accord. He was willing to face cruel death to help others to have a better life. And that's what God wants you to have, a better life. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes in high school, uh, things can go awry. I remember I was taking Sister Conkles to prom. Uh, neither one of us were saved. I was take her to prom. Uh, borrowed my friend's 64 Chevy Super Sport. It was black with a white interior. And I it had plugs on it, Brother Bill. I'll see Brother Bill's. It had plugs. We opened up the plugs, went out in the country. Oh, uh, I think it was roaring four speed. We were having a big old time. And I had uh, three or four guys in the car, and I was just about out of gas. So uh, I was stopping and asked if anybody would like to help fill up the gas. Nobody volunteered. I drove around for two hours or three. We had a big old time. Uh, we got to my house and I said, hey guys, uh, I'm going to pull in here, grab the, the garden hose and a bucket of soap. We'll wash this down, get ready for tonight. Oh, can't do that. Can't do that. Got to get home, get ready for the problem. Three or four guys can wash a car in about half hour. But, you know, they didn't have time. That's the way it is in the world. They use you and they abuse you. And then when you need them, they're not there for you. But God is always there for you, church. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. If you were an athlete in high school, you should have been concerned about being a team player. Not some.
someone to get top honors. Amen. Jesus Christ is one that he did everything. He was all and above all. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. Jesus looked at Peter when Peter was in his early 20s. And he said, Peter, when you're an old man, he said, they're going to take you somewhere you don't want to go. History tells us that when Peter was an old man, they grabbed him, arrested him, took him to a cross, and they crucified him upside down. But all through Peter's life, he knew I don't have to worry about a thing until I get old. And then uh, I, God has told me uh, that I'm going to suffer at this. Uh, one day he was asked to preach in his early ministry. God spoke to him. He said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail, uh, prevail against it. And he said, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. Whatever you bind on earth is going to be bound in heaven. And whatsoever is bound in heaven will be bound on earth. He said, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Praise God. Jesus. Praise God. It's nothing strange what the keys are. It's all about turning your life around. Amen. It's all about uh, mimicking Christ and trying to be like him. Amen. It's all about doing the best you can do and finding your way. Uh, to a place where you can uh, get remission of sins. And then it's all about uh, finding a place that you can get to receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. What Peter is actually saying to the whole world uh, 2,000 years ago, and the message is still good today. Change your ways and be good. Yes. Praise God. Have your past washed away by being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and receive his spirit. Amen. Praise God. Uh, Peter was not bashful. He knew what true joy was. Praise God. Peter was a fisherman. Amen. He liked to go fishing. He loved to go fishing. How many of you like to go fishing? Amen. I love to go fishing. Uh, he was a fisherman. Uh, but one day he was fishing. <laughs> and you know, ever catch any of that seaweed? I think they called it a, what they call it? A, we used to call it something. Yeah. Seaweed. What was it? A, what, what did they call that? Some kind of fish. Oh, fish. I don't know. It was a joke anyway. So, oh, look, got a, caught a big fish, a big green fish, you know. Uh, anyways, uh, you ever get your, your, your hook hung up in a tree <laughs> somewhere? Or get your hook, a fish swims under a log, and you, you got your hook stuck in the log and the fish is wrapped around the log. Amen. And it gets frustrating and, and, and it can be a problem for you. Praise God. We love the fish. Amen. We love the fish. But God has something special for his people. Amen. And he wants you to give your heart and your life to him. Praise God. That's where the joy comes from. Amen. That's where the joy came from. Uh, Peter was wanting uh, to go fishing. Uh, Jesus Christ walked up to him and he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Amen. As much as he loved fishing, uh, he realized that there's something about those eyes. They, it's like when you look into Jesus' eyes, it's like looking into the universe. Amen. When you looked into his eyes, it's like looking into uh, something that was drawing you in. Praise God. And Peter just dropped his nets and um, he just simply walked away, followed Jesus, and he never went back to the fishing until Jesus died and was buried and resurrected. And finally, I guess he thought it was over. This three and a half year run that we had with Jesus, it looks like it's over. So Peter says, let's go fishing. So they all went fishing. And uh, fished all night. Didn't do too good. He got up in the morning, and there's someone on shore said, did you catch any fish? 
Now Jesus doesn't ask dumb questions, right? He knew that he hadn't got anything. He said, put your head on the other side and you'll catch something. So they threw it on the other side. You know the story. Uh, uh, John, uh, faithful John, he said, when all the fish started coming in the net, and they pulled them up. And John said, it's the Lord. So John recognized who the man was standing on the shore. It was the resurrected Christ. He already had the fire going. He already had the fish on the fire. He was saying, come and die. Amen. The master was calling to those men, uh, come and die. I'm alive. I'm here. I'm well. Uh, they put me in the grave. They crucified me. They beat me up. But I have risen from the dead and I'm here. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Praise God. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Peter I didn't even have much clothes on. He didn't care. He just ran to the front of the ship, uh, planted his foot on the helm of the ship, and go off into the ocean, swam as fast as he could get to Jesus, ran up there and gave him a big hug, and no doubt fell down in his feet and began to weep and cry. Oh, what a wonderful time that they had. And they talked to Jesus 40 days after he had risen from the dead. And he told them what to preach, how to preach it, where to go. It really bothers me when people tell me that you can't believe what Peter said. It really bothers me when they say Peter was a radical. He certainly was. Jesus was walking on the Sea of Galilee. And Peter said, is that you, Lord? And he said, it is I. And he, Peter said, if it's you, bid me to come out on the water. And he said, come. And Peter jumped out of the boat, walking on the water. Praise God. If you call that someone that's radical, I'd say, oh, we need to redefine the word radical. That is an obedient man that is willing to do anything, no matter what it looks like, and no matter how dangerous it seems to be. Those waves were probably 10 to 12 feet tall. Amen. And the ship was about ready to go down. Amen. And he said, come. And Peter jumped out. Praise God. Peter had a wonderful relationship with Jesus Christ, and you can too. Hallelujah. And Sister Carol comes. Praise God. Jesus saw you in heaven while he was on the cross. Praise God. I'm going to say that again. Jesus saw you in heaven. He knows who's going to go to heaven when he was on the cross. He died for you knowing who was going to make it, who was going to say yes to Jesus, and who was going to say no. Amen. But I want to warn you ahead of time. The way of the transgressor is hard. Praise God. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. Praise God. The joy of the Lord is what's going to get us there. Amen. Amen. We don't want to make good impressions on other people. Amen. That makes you a miserable person. But we want to be humble. We want to think of others better than ourselves. Amen. But I don't think anybody should ever doubt themselves. I don't believe in that either. I think we should value every human being, whether rich, poor, or whether leaves, one way or the other, as far as politics. I think we should value all of them and pray for them because uh, they're going to need help. Amen. Trying to lead uh, our country. Amen. Jesus. Praise God. We need to think about the lives of others, not always about our own concerns. We need to be interested in the lives of others, genuinely interested. Everybody say genuinely interested. <laughs> Jesus came riding into Jerusalem on donkey, not on a white horse. And share it. If we sow selfishness, we will reap the same God promises. Jesus emptied himself when he came from heaven. Praise God. We are so thankful uh, for the truth about where joy comes from. It comes from within. And it will never come up your door. It won't be somebody you meet. It will be somebody that comes into your heart. And fills you with his spirit. Praise the Lord. This altar is open here today. 
or if you'd like to talk with me after church to find out what do I need to do to find my way to Christ? What is the plan that God has for me? Praise God. I'd be glad to talk to you, be glad to pray with you, and be glad to lead you in the same direction that Apostle Peter would have or Apostle Paul. Praise God. Apostle Peter was the apostle to the Jews, and Apostle Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. Two men who agree exactly the same what uh, the way to Christ was and is and ever shall be. Praise the Lord. Let's sing a song. Amen. The altar's open. If you want to talk to me about what you need to do to get right with God, just call me aside or I'll look in the eye and, and uh, I don't know. Amen. Met a lady this week at the door. Go out for a few minutes. Not two hours. Not the doors here in Marbet. And uh, one of the ladies we met, she comes to a Wednesday night service. Uh, Sister Donna, she was out there. And I met her. And I was asking her, you're ready to serve the Lord, aren't you? And she said, oh yeah. She said, I'm done with this world. I'm done with this world. So my party is in a long time ago. And I'm done with the world. And I said, well, are you thinking about giving your life to the Lord? And she said, I am. I am. It wouldn't surprise me. Wednesday night, she wants to get baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'll tell you what. It's a good luck. Thank you. It's 365. Page 365. <laughs>
leaders out in the world. Uh, and you couldn't sing that song with any uh, feeling of security. Amen. But just a year or so later, I was singing that song with joy in my heart. Because I knew that I had been redeemed and God had called me out of the world. Amen. When God calls you, you know he's calling you. Praise God. And it's a good idea just to jump. Jump up from your seat, head for the altar, talk to the preacher. Amen. Get your life straight out. Uh, in, in, in eternity, you'll be glad you did. Uh, think about it for just a second as we close. Uh, you're, you're aged now. Look around at the people that are a little older than you. Uh, and then then there are some that aren't here anymore. That's, that's where all of us are heading. Uh, but the main thing is we, we obey this. That's all God's looking for. He's looking for people that believe in Him. How many of you have always wanted someone that would believe in you? Maybe uh, they accused you falsely of something, and you just want people to believe your story. That's what God wants. He wants you to believe that he actually wrote himself in flesh and came here and died on a cross for you so you can have eternal life. That's all God wants you to believe. And he wants you to take advantage of that. And he wants you to replace the fallen angels in heaven. The devils that got kicked out of heaven, we're going to replace them. And that's going to be a great day. Amen. Uh, let that sink way down into your brain. Amen. Because that's the only thing in life that really matters. Amen. Is that you understand that principle. Mm -hmm. And that God came here to redeem you. Amen. And the devil came here yes. to destroy oh, you. Yes. He wants to destroy you. He knows he got kicked out of heaven and he ain't no going back. Mm -hmm. He may visit a little bit of God every now and then, but he's out. He's out of there. And, but we've got a, a road paved to heaven to the cross of Calvary. Amen. What do you say? Let's walk down the Calvary's road and let's get there. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next time.